there is an old African saying that what an old man can see while seated on that small three-legged stool, a young man cannot see coming even if they climb the highest tree around. And this saying, I believe, is so relevant in politics. And where Kenyan politics has reached now, you know, before it was very easy to read what is happening, to read what may happen next, to predict with precision what is going to unfold next. But right now, <laughs> the Tukwa ground is quite different. Okay? Now, what is really interesting Kenyans right now is the controlled chaos within UDA. Or shall I say the chaos within UDA that seems to be controlled for now. You see, when chaos is ongoing and you're controlling it, one of two things can happen. Those chaos can come to an end or those chaos can escalate beyond control. There seems to be a lot of infighting within UDA. People are saying the Prime Cabinet Minister, Musali Amdavadi, and the Deputy President, Rigadi Gashagwa, <laughs> don't see eye to eye. And there are a lot of other small, tough wars going on within UDA, some which the public are aware, many of which most people are not aware of. But this is on the eve of that bill of all bills. I mean, in the history of Kenya, we have never had any bill, any law being discussed in parliament that has generated so much controversy, so much heat, as the finance bill 2023. So all these things are happening on the eve of this very, very major event in Kenyan politics. And I'm going to discuss a bit more about that and what we should expect shortly because people are puzzled. President William Ruto is saying he'd like the voting to be public so that everybody sees. People are asking why, how come, etc., etc. We'll deal with that later on in this video. But first of all, I'd like us to get our basics right. Because when we get our basics right, even without me analyzing for you the outcome of that bill, you'll be able to understand so many things and even make your own correct analysis and prediction of where we're going with all this. Now, in past videos, I've discussed from a spiritual point of view what to expect when something is formed in the foundations of rebellion. You see, every building, every organization, every setup, everything has a foundation. Even the life of a person. Your foundation is critical. Yeah, because it decides what the rest of the building is going to look like. What the rest of the life of that organization is going to look like. Including its ending. I have discussed that a lot as a very basic factor that has brought a lot of clarity to many yeah, over what is happening in Kenyan politics. Confusion has vanished from many areas where there was a lot of confusion before. Now, hopefully today I'm going to clear even more confusion with the introduction of something very shocking and something very new that I've not discussed before in this analysis, especially on the eve of this drama that is unfolding. Now, I know many Azimio supporters are wondering, why hasn't Chris mentioned Mandamano yet? <laughs> now, my response to that, do you want me to waste your time discussing the obvious? Yeah, the obvious like oxygen, like sunset and sunrise. Because all these things that are happening, everything that is being done by UDA is a very determined effort to force Mandamanos. Yeah, including this new thing I'm going to introduce to you. Yeah, and please be patient. It is major and it will bring you a lot of clarity. 
I assure you will never again be confused about what the UDA government gets up to. Never again. Because even I have been very confused. Because you see, when you enter politics, you want to win. When you enter politics, you want to be successful. If you become president and you have an administration, there is no administration that is set up to fail. Every administration wants to succeed. So, that Muse has been sitting on a three-legged stool. He's very confused. Because everything this administration is doing, it is doing very deliberately to fail. So this Muse has been asking, why? How come? What is it that I'm not seeing here? Well, here's your answer today. The Kenya Kwanzaa administration is suffering from what medical experts tell us is a disease, a real disease. Yeah, but actually it isn't. I'll explain why later. Yeah. It is suffering from something called in medical terms, narcissistic personality disorder. Now don't worry at that very long, confusing, very boring <laughs> term. Don't worry. As you know, on this channel, we break it down, kabisa, up to grade 2 level. You can understand what we're talking about. Okay? So relax. And let me start with a personal confession yeah, that I'm still very ashamed of. I mean, how could I? Really? How? Now, you know, Mimi Sijasoma sana. Okay? But I'm very grateful to Almighty God. The places where I went to school, yeah, I will never ever demand a refund from any of them. Because they did their job perfectly. I take personal responsibilities for any failures. It was not theirs. It is mine. And I also thank Almighty God for the education, because many people don't value this kind of education. For the education in this life. Yeah, in the school of hard knocks, very important, and in the school of exposure to understand many things. All this compounded with the fact that all my life I have been a journalist. Okay, and as a journalist, what are you doing most of the time? What are you doing more, much more than writing and broadcasting? You are researching. Okay, now. Even with all that exposure, all that education, all that constant research, for years I saw this term narcissistic personality disorder and I ignored it. Too boring. Now you know in this life, there is another saying, as you funzo na mamake, ata funzo na dunia. Yeah, if you're not taught manners by your parents. The world will teach you. And of course, when the world teaches you, it doesn't teach you in love. Utafunzwa na majara mengi. And that is exactly what happened to me. And so what I stubbornly refused to study and research on, found me at my door, inside my house. And the result of that were bruises and wounds that I'm still nursing and I'm hoping one day they will heal. That is how serious it was. So in a way, I consider myself yeah, somebody who has experienced firsthand narcissistic personality disorder. What they look like, what they behave, what they usually say and the constant lies in their lives which to them are the truth. They lie and lie and then they lie again. I saw that with my own two eyes. Folks, your research, Sikusoma, <laughs> I experienced. Now, I don't want to lose anybody. We are talking about a disease that the Kenya Kwanzaa government has. Yeah, A disease that will not go away. Don't expect it to go away. Never ever. Okay? And the consequences will continue to be felt for a long time. 
So the best thing is for you to understand so that you know what to expect. Don't even get annoyed. There's no need. Don't change anything. Now the definition, the book definition of narcissistic personality disorder is an unreasonably high sense of self-importance that requires constant and excessive admiration. Kofupi. That's what it is. But if you ask me for a definition from my personal experience, Maringo pride at a very high level. Number one. Number two, total lack of empathy doesn't exist. It's like somebody has a stone instead of a heart. Number three, constant, persistent, consistent lies. That's how I define it. And although in my personal opinion I defer as to where the real source of this is, yeah, but if I stick to the experts, the medical experts, I totally agree with them that this is a sickness. It is a disease. Because these people when they are doing these things they do, they don't see it. They don't feel guilty. Me and you can do something mean to other people. And the truth is that we'll feel it. We'll feel some sense of guilt. It will affect our conscience even just a little. These people absolutely feel nothing. And they believe they're absolutely right. They're on the right track. There's nothing wrong they did. Let me give you a quick example. Where this poor man was married to a woman who was a narcissist suffering from a very severe case of narcissistic personality disorder. And one day, this man caught his wife cheating. Now, for a normal human being, the normal reaction is that when you're caught, you feel guilty. You feel bad. None of those feelings were in this woman. Yeah. And the discussion that resulted from that in front of a psychiatrist <laughs> was actually just dark comical drama. Body language, tone of voice, expressions, everything showed that the woman felt that she was completely innocent. She had done nothing wrong. And her response, it was your fault. Now she's telling her husband, it was your fault. If you'd have made me happier, this would never have happened. It was your fault. Had you been a little taller, a little more handsome, this would never have happened. It is your fault. Maybe if you had a little more money, a better car, this would never have happened. <laughs> Bottom line, it is not my fault, my dear husband. I want to continue this marriage, but it is not my fault. It is your fault. It is all because of you. You're the one who caused this. It is all your fault. We should be discussing you and how we have to sort out your issues. We don't have any issues. And she was serious. Yeah. And by the way, all this I'm getting from an expert in this field. They know what they're talking about. Indeed, these experts say, in the mind of a narcissist, it's all black and white. Yeah. They're always right. The other person is always wrong. Period. And they totally believe that. Totally. Now let me go very quickly through some of the chief characteristics of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. Yeah, and I need to warn you. You may think that I sat down and made up these things. Yeah, but do your own research. <laughs> you will discover these are things from textbooks. Describing Kenya Kwanzaa Perfectly. Number one, they expect to be recognized as superior even without achievements. I didn't make that one up. This is precisely what the Kenya Kwanzaa government is doing. Ama, what achievements do they have? Zero. But they believe that they are superior to Azimio. They are superior to Raila Odinga. What achievements does Raila Odinga have? They are superior to Martha Karua. What achievements does Martha Karua have? I'm not saying those people are perfect. 
But what achievements do they have? Yeah, but still, the narcissistic Kenya Kwanza government believes in their heart of hearts that they're superior. Behave arrogantly, brag a lot, and come across as conceited. Now I'll come back to that one in a minute because that one is deadly. Na hiyo ndo italete shida Kenya. Okay, I'll explain in a little bit. Let's move to another one. Belittle other people to make themselves appear superior. Yule mganga. Yeah. So that they appear that they are more superior. They must be more superior than a mganga, surely. That's the whole idea. Yule mtu wa vitendawili. Again. <laughs> that is a person who is inferior. Yeah, they just dwell on vitendawili. But then, they dwell with real issues. That's really what they're saying. Textbook narcissistic behavior. Textbook. Yani meandiko kwa textbook. Na mtu. Zamani sana. <laughs> Sio leo. Now let's come back to the earlier point. Where we said, arrogantly brag a lot. And come across as conceited. Okay. And this is the reason why, as we speak, as I make this recording, there are fewer and fewer places in the country called Kenya where you can go now and hold a successful UDA meeting. Very few. Why? Because when you are conceited and you are arrogant, and people are suffering. And people don't have food on the table. People can't afford to take their children to school. And you're behaving like that in front of them. It's even better just to keep quiet. Stay mom. They won't be provoked. But when you do these things, it is human nature that you're really, really provoking them. Unaochokoza ile mbaya. And the professionals also tell us they are still doing research. They have no idea where it comes from. They still debate. Constant research is being done to discover where this thing comes from in the hope that they'll be able to find a cure. However, those who are spiritual, they know the exact source where it's coming from. Okay, So allow me a few seconds, a few minutes to tell you what those who are spiritual say. They say it is a demon. It's a spirit. A controlling spirit. Yeah, sometimes called the spirit of Jezebel. Which is usually accompanied by very many other very damaging spirits. Including the spirit of lying. Yeah, and another one. <laughs> called the spirit of immorality. Now I find that last one very interesting. Because... Scientists tell us, yeah, nurses suffer from something called a dysfunctional moral standard. Yani, their morals are not on par with the normal, usual moral standards. Other fellow humans who are not nurses may want to keep or at least to recognize I'm feeling I should just leave it at that. Yeah, You can also do your own research. But more importantly, you can now begin to understand. Because when you understand, confusion and mystery disappears. You totally understand. You can even predict the future. That's really what it is. When Nazimio came up with a strategy to shoot down the finance bill, by ensuring the way legislators vote is made public, many Kenyans thought this is game shot. <laughs> this will bring down the finance bill. Kabisa. Because the minute those things are made public, legislators will fear. The president will fear. Guess what? The president himself has come out and said, that the voting on the finance bill must, lazima, it must be made public. 
he wants it to be made public. <laughs> yeah? Because everybody knows the reactions of suffering Kenyans. What Kenyans think of the finance bill? Every Kenyan to a man and a woman. Because it means more money out of their pocket. And everybody recognizes that. Now I think you understand. Total lack of empathy. And after all, the Kenya Kwanzaa legislators have been bought. A vast majority of them all their positions. Yeah, to the president. Without him, they would not have made it. Yeah, so will they choose? The answer is rather obvious. Because we have seen attempts of trying to sell this thing on the ground. Any in the country, even the Rift Valley, anywhere. Even strongholds of the UDA. Even the home village of the president. Go now and try and sell it. <laughs> Everybody knows that. But now we are beginning to understand. It is something called a total lack of empathy. So it doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter to a legislator what people on the ground feel. No, that is irrelevant. What matters is what they need to do and what they have to do. Period. And so it would seem that what is going to happen, this is a bill that will sell through. Mapema nasubui. So nobody should start having any fantasies or dreams that anything will go different, barring a miracle. And I'm a man who believes in miracle. Barring intervention by Almighty God. And I'm a man who believes in exactly that. If that does not happen, don't expect anything different. Okay? And I think now you understand more why. Of course, sail through it will, but the problem will come at the moment of enforcement, when it has to be enforced, that is where there's going to be shida kubwa. Because you see, basics of anything is enforcement. You can pass a law, you can pass any law. The problem is enforcement. How are you going to enforce it? I can hear the answer from some of you. It is the law. Nobody wants to go to jail. People will avoid jail by complying. Okay. My advice, read your history. If you make a law that 50% of the population is against, enforcing is easy. I believe even 70% of the population, if they're against a law and you pass it, enforcing it is very viable. What I am not sure about is when it is 100%. 100% of the people are against that law. I'm not sure if enforcing it is going to be easy. Let me just put it like that. Okay? Of course, the middle class, you and I, will comply. We have no option. We don't go to jail. We'll comply quickly. But what percentage are we of the population? What percentage are we of the envisaged revenue the government is looking for? Ask yourself that question. Because the real money, and there's a lot of money being looked for here, the real money is with the majority. And we know the people in the middle class are not the majority. Now, somebody called me to ask me why Ray Loading is so quiet. Yeah, why is not doing more than what he's doing to stop this thing? You know what I told them? Raila does not need to do anything. In fact, in my opinion, it would be a mistake for him to do anything. Why? Let the goat meat cook in its own fat. Why do you want to add your own extra fat? What for? You'll spoil. It's dangerous. It's not good for your health. Just sit back and let the goat cook itself nicely in its own fat. No need to interfere. Yeah, that's the answer I gave. 
That's what I believe. You know, history tells us over and over again that if you want to rule people, and those people don't want to be ruled by you, and in our case in Kenya, those people don't want to be ruled by you, you're adding insult to injury. You're behaving proud, conceited. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? What do you expect the result will be? So if you have come this far in this video, congratulations. Now let me make it worth your while. In 2019, I was led into producing a set of videos on how to prosper in a dead economy, such as the one we're facing now. Because when things are the way they are now, uncertainty, economy, kwisha maneno, it is also a time of great opportunity. Now, when I produced those videos, there was very little response from members of this channel. Okay? Things were still good then. It was difficult to see such a bleak future. It was difficult to believe whether anything like that would ever happen. But here we are now. And therefore, I'm offering these videos once again. And if you're a member of my weekly intelligence briefings, you can get it at the amazing offer you see on your screens right now. The three sets of videos plus the two books, which I'm very confident will take you through what is coming. Because it is coming. Indeed, it is already here. If you're not a member, you'll have to take it at the price which was set then, yeah, which was $54.00. It'll still be $54. You can see details on your screens right now. I'm afraid the offer for members of WIB is very limited. To three or four days. Yeah. At only $13.95. Or Kenya shillings, $1,395. My message to you, my dear friends, because I really care, is that even if you don't take this offer, Please prepare yourselves. It is terribly important that you prepare yourselves. God remember mercy for Kenya. God help the nation called Kenya. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.